time for RTB 101, where we discuss practical questions to equip you to share your faith more effectively. And here to help me talk about a very important topic when sharing our faith with scientifically minded friends is biochemist Dr. Fuzz Rana. Welcome, Fuzz. Krista, thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk about this topic today, um, kind of out there on the cutting edge, transhumanism. Now, you wrote an entire book with Ken Samples about transhumanism a couple years ago, Humans 2.0, and it's a topic that is continuing to grow in popularity. So maybe let's start with a definition. This might be new for some of our viewers. What is transhumanism? Well, you know, Krista, in my experience, uh, a lot of people have never heard of the term transhumanism, but they actually are pretty familiar with the concepts that are central to this idea. And, and namely, transhumanism, in a nutshell, is this uh, notion that as uh, scientists and, and technologists, we have a, a moral obligation to use science and technology to modify the biological makeup of human beings and in doing so, correct our biological flaws, overcome our biological limitations. And the idea is that this will allow us to become stronger and, and smarter and more psychologically well-adjusted. And so people are using or looking to use uh, technological advances to modify our biological makeup uh, to really enhance human beings beyond our natural limits. And uh, the hope here is that through this process, uh, we could take control of our own evolution and really evolve human beings into a collection of post-human species uh, that would be of our own making. So in a way, I think I'm understanding now the title of your book, Humans 2.0, it's kind of the next level of human evolution, if you will. So that makes me wonder then, why do you think this topic has become so popular um, with so many people? Do you think that there's a particular motivation behind it that has really caused people's interest to grow? Yeah, well, you know, this idea of using technology to, to modify our biologies, to enhance our, our biology, isn't really anything new. In fact, some of the ideas that are central to transhumanism appear in the early 1900s. Uh, but most people regarded transhumanism as a fringe idea on the sidelines, on the margins of, of the academy until recently. And thanks to advances that are happening in things like gene editing and, and brain computer interfaces, which now actually give us the technology to do what transhumanists hope we could do, uh, suddenly gives credibility to transhumanism. It's now really moved into the academic mainstream where credible scientists and technologists and philosophers are seriously entertaining a future where we literally modify our biological makeup with technologies. So what would you say is the end goal then of the transhumanist movement in, in trying to kind of push the evolution of humanity forward? Like, where is this heading? Are they trying to help us overcome death? I mean, what do you think that they see as being the real long-term goal? Many people that hold to the transhumanist view think that much of the pain and suffering that human beings experience is due to our flaws and our, our biological limitations. And so the hope is that by stepping in and correcting these with technology, we can mitigate pain and suffering and work our way towards a utopian type of future of our own creation. But ultimately, many transhumanists see the, the fundamental and the ultimate limitation that we face as human beings is our own mortality. And so they think that this technology can actually extend life expectancy, maybe even give us a, a practical type of immortality. So even though the ideas of transhumanism are intertwined with science and technology, at the end of the day, you could really think of transhumanism as really being a religious idea where uh, you know, transhumanism is an appeal to science and technology as uh, the mode of our salvation. So if that's the goal, I'm wondering then, are all transhumanists atheists? Are they, is, is their goal then to try to 
almost effectively kind of take control of their own destiny? Or are there Christians involved in the transhumanist movement? Uh, the, the, many transhumanists are atheists, but there are some Christians who embrace transhumanism. Uh, but for an atheist, transhumanism is really very important because uh, it, it forms a, a type of eschatology. Uh, because think about this, if you hold to a materialistic view of the world, then ultimately each of us is going to die and we're going to, our existence is going to come to an end. And the same would, would be true for all of humanity. And so there's a bleak future if you are an atheist, a materialist. But with transhumanism, suddenly now you infuse that, that worldview with hope, purpose, and destiny. And so for atheists, transhumanism really becomes a critical eschatology. Uh, for some Christians, they are looking to appropriate ideas of transhumanism and, and incorporate it into Christian theology, uh, but it doesn't take on the same level of urgency and importance for Christians as it does for atheists. So when we think about eschatology or meaning end times, when we think about that, one thing we know from scripture is that the church will endure until Christ's coming. You know, that, that no matter what happens with transhumanism, um, Jesus will return to earth someday and find his faithful church here. But I'm wondering, um, what do you see as being maybe some approaches that we can engage with our tr people in our lives who might be looking into transhumanism? You know, like what is the better hope that Christianity offers? Yeah. Well, and again, it, it goes back to this idea that, you know, that transhumanism really at the end of the day is a religious idea. And, and, and so what is happening is that people that hold to a transhumanist view are seeking after the very same things that we're seeking after as Christians. They realize that the world is not the way that it should be, and they want to step in and do something to, to mitigate pain and suffering, to promote human flourishing. They, they desire a utopian future. But above all, they desire ultimately hope, purpose, and destiny. There's a, a desire to connect with that which is transcendent. And, and so these are really the same things that we hope for as Christians. And in fact, this is what the gospel offers. And so we need to be able to recognize that transhumanism is in effect a false gospel, and we need to be prepared to show why it is, and then how uh, people can actually discover the true source of salvation in the person of Christ. Well, thanks, Fuzz, for getting us a little bit more up to speed on this very important topic. I want to recommend people check out your book, uh, again, Humans 2.0, and you can get that at reasons.org.